Okay, uh, I'm Bill Venters, and someone asked me about the Scala check, and uh, so I just wanted to show real quickly what it was, and then uh, maybe uh, it'll tweak someone's curiosity. You can ask me about it later. Uh, the problem it attempts to solve is the problem of tests are very verbose. You can have as much as four times as much test code for your production code. So what it uh, allows you to do is specify properties that should be true about your production code, and then it generates test cases for it, and will execute them. And it'll try the edge conditions and whatnot. So uh, the first thing you got to know about it is uh, what a function looks like in Scala. This is a function literal. Uh, it's like a, a function with no name, but it has a parameter list. That's the first thing in, in, in parentheses there. This function has two parameters, x and y, they're both ends. Then there's a rocket symbol, and then there's the body of the function. So what that happens is you can put one of these in your code, assign it to a variable, and then you can invoke it. It looks just like a method call. You name the variable in parens, and you pass in parameters. It will execute, and the result is x plus y in this case. You pass 1 and 2, you'll get 3. Okay. So what you can do in Scala check is you can specify properties of your uh, production code as functions like this. So um, what... I have here in uh, NetBeans is, that's not NetBeans, there you are, is just a few of these, uh, uh, sort of the simple ones. So this one I just made up tonight as a demo. Um, so right here, this is a function literal. I've got, uh, this function takes two strings, A and B, and then the body, it is a, it's always got to be Boolean, it'll return true or false. True means the property held. And so I just say A plus B dot starts with A. That should be true, right? That's kind of testing string. And um, so that will be true. Another one, this is from uh, basically a little more complicated. Uh, these are properties that I actually use. Uh, and then I made them fail. So um, this one, sorry. Uh, I, in, in Scala test, which is the tool I wrote, you can say check put a function literal in there, and it'll call Scala check to generate test cases, pass them in, and then we'll give you a nice uh, failure message if it fails. Um, so I just say S plus T should start with S, and what I'm testing here is this, this DSL syntax for, for writing assertions in Scala test. Uh, that should always be true for any S. Uh, I'm basically testing the start with thing. So I just changed it over here. I said if S that length does not equal 1, then it's S. Otherwise, it's blah. So if whenever you know, the S passed in here is 1, it length 1, this test is going to fail. And that looks like this. So this is the failed test. So basically what you get is, and this is called test, you'll get the line number that we were just looking at. And it says falsified after one pass test. So it did actually pass one test before it found a, a set of parameters to pass it, cause it to fail. And it tells you what they are. It says R0 is and 6 has length 1, right? so that's a length fit. And one other thing you can do is uh, uh, you can uh, put in, let's see if I can find them here. Uh, there. So this uh, property here has this little double bracket with two equal signs. What that means is you pass any in, you know, style text that you put in bunch of ints. Every, if int is equal to zero, then int should equal to zero. That's what this uh, property says, which means that it's only going to actually hold if you pass in a zero. So uh, this guy will actually throw a set, an exception saying that uh, I couldn't generate enough tests, if the test cases for it. Um, but basically what you can put in there is, uh, you know, if it's not just any string, but it has to be, or it's not just any int, it has to be positive. You can say that the n, you know, the n has to be greater than zero, and only then will you even try to the property. So you can things like that. And then the last thing that I can show you here is um, this is a more complicated property, and I'm using this for all thing. This is just when you pass a property, a fun, a, 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 a <coughs> for all it returns a property that you can then check, and you can stick little labels on the parts of the property so that when it fails, if it's a complicated property, you can figure out which part failed. So, uh, this takes two ints. This guy does fail. And if you look at the, uh, the output here, it says that uh, the part of that property that failed is result not sum. 
the arts of the